your pH balance. That's that's potentially the concern and has also made me sneeze and clear the room. I wonder why your grease is slipping sliding everywhere. Mm-mm. Don't do that to yourself. And don't let it be that you walk past somebody. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> So class is in session and um, I'd like to thank the person here because today I'm sharing with you all my everyday shower routine and has been my staple. Get your notebooks ready. So we always got to start with the feminine hygiene. I have seen in other areas and other routines that they have not started off with the feminine hygiene. That is not my forte. That is not my way because what works for one person doesn't. For my everyday shower routine, I get started by building the foundation of my shower routines in the exact structure like they build a fragrance. Un momento, por favor. Yeah. The first thing they have are base notes. Bam. Then they have middle notes. Now the screen would be flipped, but we have base notes. That's when the notes they start off first when they're formulating the fragrance. Middle notes and then top notes, which is usually what you smell first. And then once it dries down, middle and base notes follow along. Now how I structure my shower routines, we got to get the feminine hygiene off the ground. Now I have forgotten it in previous videos recently. But I always start off with feminine hygiene. Feminine hygiene is what I start off with first, just for the simple fact that I like to make sure my lady parts are clean before I get to anything else. I like to do that just because when you get to the part of you showering and or bathing, you're bound to allow whatever you bathe with bar soap or body wash. It will wind up getting in your lady parts by accident if you go ahead and shower with your body wash first. What that's going to make you susceptible to is messing with your pH balance. That's, that's potentially the concern here. In order for me to dispel that, we got feminine hygiene. I, I start off with my feminine wash first. Tried and true what works for me. Don't know about anybody else, but summer's eve to nighttime cleansing wash. Smells like lavender. And this is the best version of lavender I've ever smelled because all the other lavenders has made my nose burn and has also made me sneeze and clear the room. Yeah. <laughs> I might edit that out. Now I have the wipes up here because it's not yet time for it. The next step within my everyday shower routine. I go ahead with whatever I'm showering with. At the moment, it is Caress. They have recently rebranded, so the bottles are a little different, depending on if this version has sold out or you have the new one. I'm currently on this Caress Liquid Gold affectionately named title. And I go ahead and I go with my contact points, depending on the type of body wash it is. This is exfoliating with minor amounts of exfoliation beads i go right in elbows because those tend to look look the roughest and tell on you as well as kneecaps you know those those two areas will tell on you if they're ashy or or rough not exfoliated they're rough not smooth they'll tell on you so I always go in those areas first with the body wash or if I'm using a body scrub first, I'll go in with the elbows and the kneecaps first. Always the most ash prone areas and, and, and the, the roughest areas of skin on my body after I've done feminine wash with Summer's Eve. And when I tell you I go in there, it'd be about half the bottle left or three quarters of a bottle left, you know, three fourths, 75%. You do the math. And I get in there, that, that's why the elbows are smooth. Is the baby's bottom. 
baby butter smooth. And then I go ahead and rinse. And a lot of times what I'll do is based on what I'm showering with, three to four rinses, which means I have applied at least two to three times. Body scrub is a little bit different, something abrasive such as tree hut. I'm going to go ahead and do that about twice, depending on the abrasiveness of the scrub. Tree Hut, once. Dove Body Polish, at least twice is what I'm going to do concerning that. Then once the two to three rinse, we're going to move on to the moisture. What I've been loving lately, and regardless of the fact that I've started with this EOS Vanilla Cashmere, I go in with some type of moisturizing lotion, regardless of the year. I tend to not gravitate towards too many scents to be seasonal during the current season that it is. If I feel like smelling like cookies in the middle of hot summer, I'm going to put on this vanilla cashmere. That's just me. So when I go in with my moisture, I go in with a guap, but I apply it in layers. So class. What is a guap? I know you got questions. Guap is a whole lot. It, it is at least a quarter size or larger amount of lotion or product any in your hands. You get a guap, you get a, you get a fairly lot, large quarter sized amount and you start applying that lotion in layers. This is especially helpful to do and learn this technique just because based on the lotion, whether it's greasy or not, it helps to know how to evenly distribute your product across your skin so you get the most wear out of it and it also absorbs really really well and allows your scent to project evenly things learned with time trial and error that's one layer rub that through your hands first until it is nearly clear glisten to your hands is glisten Glisten to your hands, it's glistening. Hey. <laughs> and over the same areas or the areas you did not catch the first time. And what you're essentially doing, you're also building the moisture in your skin wherever you apply. This is strictly a tip for lotions. But then you're also building that scent if it's a scent based lotion. Now, if it's scentless, then there ain't much going to happen there. But if it's fragrance lotion, you're also building up the scent in the lotion. As opposed to, I'm, I'm finna apply the whole bottle on me and then wonder why your grease is slipping, sliding everywhere. Mm -mm. It'll wind up and bust all of your, your butt part. You hear my... Now something else I'm going to add, because I've also done this as an alternative to using lotion. What's that you say? Perfume oil. What could be an alternative to lotion? Perfume oil. This is not sponsored, but you know, my contact, my words, information is down below. Sweet Essentials. I've been using this for nearly three years. I can't believe it. Time is going on so fast. Alcohol-free perfume oil. The only alcohol-free perfume oil so far that I have came across of the utmost quality. This is Midnight Poison. Christian Dior has Midnight Poison in their line. This is a perfume rendition. No alcohol to dry out the scent. If you're in a rush or you just don't feel like going through the whole spiel of putting a lotion on from head to toe, hello, there is an alternative. Get yourself a really good alcohol-free. It must be alcohol-free because you don't want to dry your skin out after you just showered or bathed with the moisturizing body wash or general body wash or bar soap. You don't want to do that because then you're stripping the moisture and stripping what you just put on your skin. And then the purpose of moisturizing your skin is to replenish what you have showered with to strip that away and clean yourself. What I've done plenty of times is alternatives. If I didn't feel like lotioning from head to toe, I take a good perfume oil and spray it on rollerball, whatever the applicator looks like and is made of alcohol-free. has to be alcohol-free. 
and just put that on and use it as a lotion. What you're going to have to do with oil specifically, perfume oils, spray that in your hands. Now, get your hands a glistening. Notice a pattern here, just like with the lotion, but perfume oil. And then put that in your contact points first. Because this is perfume oil. Because you want it to be in your contact points first. So it projects, first of all, once you're done with your application. Then apply everywhere else. Which means you're going to have to use smaller, more targeted amounts. And another tip, if you feel like using lotion, but then you also feel like using perfume oil. Perfume oil, alcohol free. Still got to be alcohol free. And a good lotion of choice, EOS Vanilla Cashmere. Let me put you on to a very, very nice, kind of gourmandish with a twist. Here is another layering combo inside of this everyday shower routine. Midnight Poison. Never mind that it's a perfume rendition. Vanilla Cashmere. Vanilla Midnight Poison. Poison line is already a very heady, not for the faint of heart fragrance. Still kind of gourmandish in its notes. Ambery. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it has a rose note. And then blending that, that gourmandish semi-floral with this vanilla, that is a gourmand. I mean, if this is any indicator of the real thing combined with... Hello. I mean, it literally gives off a very classy Dr. Till's sleep spray layering combo once everything dries down let me know if you ever try that combo and if you got the actual perfume and you try it with vanilla cashmere now when it comes to perfume we got a fragrance mist here and we got an auto perfume both from victoria don't tell nobody secret <laughs> rapture and honey mist I've never layered these two together that I know of ever. So I can't give you what the dry down is like and what it's like on my body chemistry. I like to spray my contact points first. Elbows, inner neck, inner ankles, inner wrist. You know, look at the wrist. <laughs> Misted couple feet away from my body and walk into the cloud of spray. I do have a very detailed video on how to apply fragrances regardless of concentration, whether they blast out or mist out. So I'm not, trying not to rehash too much. I should have added this sooner in the shower routine, but this is as needed. Veet Sensitive Hair Remover Cream. I prefer this, so I recommend it. I've not really had allergic reaction, but I will warn you, as I have warned in the initial video, there's a possibility it might make your legs numb after you use the cream. Yeah. So what I do when I do the when I use this hair remover cream for my legs, as needed. I usually put it on after I have showered and exfoliate. I exfoliate first, then put this on, then go right back behind it with the body wash I was initially using during the same routine, same one. So that way I can, one, rinse off any residue I may not catch with this hair remover cream. They're also called hair depilatory creams. Then also to go back over the slightly chemical smell of the cream. Aloe and violet blossom smell. It, it barely peers through. That's what I'm picking up from my nose, my senses. I always go back behind it, make it my standard practice that after I use a hair remover cream to rid any hairs on my legs, I go right back behind it with a body wash in whatever scent I initially used to put that scent back and get rid of any residue I may have missed using the razorless blade that they provide with it that's usually stuck alongside the bottle. And then once everything dries down, I mean, you're, you're a walking cloud of, of fragrance. And don't let it be that you walk past somebody. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> so I have shared my everyday shower routine. If you'd like to see more about how I structure my shower routines based on seasons or just in general, regardless of the year, 
I got a playlist here that you might want to take a look at and keep your notebook open for to take tips on. Did you enjoy the class? Love you.